Hello, my name is Gary, and I'll be presenting Nerf in the Wild Neural Radiance Fields for Unconstrained Photo Collections. Novel View Synthesis is a task in which you are given a spare set of images for an object. Given this image collection, you want to learn a representation that can synthesize new views of the object. This is a long-standing problem with many ap applications in AR and VR. Being a long-standing problem, there have been several approaches for this problem already. Some of the classic approaches have been structure from motion and bundle adjustment. More recently, we have neural rendering approaches, for example, models that try to re-render a scene given an initial output and a reference output, as well as neural radiance fields, which tries to model the scene as a radiance field. One common flaw in existing methods is that they perform uh, suboptimally for photo collections taken in the wild, which is what NerfW is mainly addressing. Unconstrained photo collections are a hard, uh, is a much harder problem compared to the constrained problem. Images in the wild don't have constant illumination. The weather and time of day is variable. Objects in the wild also aren't static, and there may be many transient objects, including our object of interest, like tourists. And in addition to this, not all cameras are consistent in terms of their intrinsic properties and post processing. Our paper's main contribution is trying to extend NERF to problem on novel view synthesis in the wild. Previous view works like neural re-rendering, which uses a GAN to re-render a view of an image, has temporal artifacts because it doesn't have a consistent 3D representation. Applying NERF directly also isn't ideal, because it has strict consistency assumptions that fail for photos in the wild. Our, this paper, NERFW, is an extension to NERF that can deal with this photometric environmental variation. And compared to past work, NERFW demonstrates higher performance on image quality metrics, smoother appearance interpolation, and better temporal consistency in the presence of appearance variation, and as well as similar performance in NERF and controlled settings. We begin by discussing NERF, the main model this paper NERFW builds off of. NERF represents the scene using a learned continuous volumetric radiance field, which is modeled as an MLP. For a scene, NERF takes in a 3D position and a unit norm viewing direction, and outputs a color and volume density. And we can interpret the volume density as the probability of a particle occupying that space. Given these outputs, what we can do is that we are able to get a ray from our camera position O to our scene pixel. We can calculate the color and density along this entire array, and using this color and density, we are able to estimate the expected color of a scene pixel. The predicted color of our pixel is calculated using volumetric rendering. This is the formula for volumetric rendering, and this integral can be, inter can be interpreted as the expected color weighted by the probability of reaching the location of the ray at time t. We have our two color terms, our expected color c hat, and our color at a ray given a viewing direction d. And then across an integral between our far and near bounds of time, we can multiply this by the probability of reaching the ray at time t. We observe that t is a probability that the ray travels from start to the, our current location. And now we can multiply that by our density at the current location to obtain the probability of our ray being at the current location. As a result, the formula is the expected color between two time bounds calculated by the color at a point weighted by the probability of the ray reaching that point. Due to the integral being very difficult to calculate and backpropagate, NERV uses quadrature to estimate the volumetric rendering. This formula is the exact same as before, except now we work in delta time steps and we have a cumulative distribution ray of the function of the ray terminating to approximate our integral. So what is the problem with NERV's approach? But one big problem is that NERF assumes consistency and that the same 3D position and viewing direction in two images should result in the same color and density. But this is not holding a wild. As seen in the images, we have transient objects such as people and also photometric variations such as lighting when we look at image collections in the wild. This paper, NERFW, adapts NERF to variable lighting and photometric changes by introducing a dependence on images and this is represented using the subtext I. We can first look at the NERF model. Given a viewing direction and a position in space, um, we obtain the color and density. However, like we said before, we cannot assume that the same three position and viewing direction will result in the same color and density for different images. As a result, NERFW introduces a new embedding, appearance embedding vector, and this stores information about the static image, things like lightning, light, lighting, photometric effects, properties, etc. And this allows our model to output to change Depend on it, depending on the image conditions. These appearance embedding is directly optimized during training and is not the output of any encoder like ResNet. 
using this appearance embedding, we obtain a static output to generate an image of our static object. But we have not addressed another part of the problem, the transient object such as tourists. NerfW addresses this problem by introducing a transient portion of the model. This transient head takes in a transient embedding and outputs a transient color and density as well as uncertainty on the pixels. And this transient embedding is optimized during training in the same way as our appearance embedding. We can use this transient color and density to reconstruct transient phenomena. And this is the object parts of the image that contains objects like tourists that will be standing in the front and including our object. In addition to this, we also output an uncertainty field, which evaluates which pixels are likely part of a transient object. And during our training, this uncertainty field modulates our tra training loss by reducing the effect that transient phenomena has on our loss. So we train, so NerfW is trained by merging static and transient portions of the image, and then given a recon full reconstruction image, this is then compared to a target image and trained using a reconstruction loss. The mathematical change mainly starts with volumetric rendering. For volumetric rendering, it is calculated the exact same way as NERF, but due to the fact that NERFW has static and transient colors, these are combined together in an alpha composite inside of the quadrature volumetric rendering. Here, tau represents the transient density and color. In regards to the loss, just like Nerf W, Nerf, uh, just like Nerf, Nerf W also simultaneously optimizes a coarse and fine model. And both of these are reconstruction losses that use the L2 distance between the ground truth color C and the predicted color C hat. For the coarse loss, Nerf W has the exact same loss as Nerf. And this is because Nerf W does not use any of the transient portions and only uses the appearance vector change for the coarse model. The main difference lies in the main in the fine loss. For the fine loss, Nerf W modulates the loss using the uncertainty beta i. Beta i is calculated using a minimum beta in a, which is added on by the model predicted additional uncertainty. The first two terms of this loss is a negative log likelihood of the ground truth color according to a normal distribution with a mean of with a mean being our predicted color and variance the uncertainty. The larger the uncertainty, the less important the pixel is, with the assumption that it belongs to a transient object. Lastly, there is a regularization term for the transient density, such so that it does not explain away static phenomena. Nerf W is evaluated on the photo tourism dataset on three different metrics that are all representing image quality. In addition to this, Nerf W has two ablations: um, Nerf A, which is without the transient head, and Nerf U, which is without the appearance embedding. And during the test time, the transient head is discarded and the appearance embedding for, is optimized for test images using the left half of the image and is evaluated on the right half. Here we show some of the qualitative results of Nerf W. Notice that NRW is sensitive to upstream errors in 3D geometry. So it's, and you can see the difference in quality between the towers. In addition to this, Nerf has a lot of foggy renderings and is prone to global color shifts. Another difference is that NRW, NERF, and NERF-A are all unable to capture the fine brickwork details, but NERF-W is capable of doing so. NERF-U is also capable of capturing the fine brickwork details, but is unable to capture photometric effects. We also notice that NRW and NERF once again have a very blurry details on wall engravings and windows as compared to NERF-W. And this is the full qualitative table, and we can see that Nerf W consistently outperforms NRW and Nerf on image quality metrics across the photo tourism data set. In addition to this, Nerf W also shows a major improvements on, in temporal consistency, as seen across these avipolar plane images, which are images taken by a camera translated left to right, with pixels all at the red line stacked on top of each other. We can see that N Nerf W is lacking in temporal artifacts as compared to NRW and NERF. Here we can also see another example of temporal consistency. Notice that NRW has a lot worse temporal consistency. In addition to this, NERF W is also capable of interpolating between appearances using the, by changing the embedding. Some of the limitations of Nerf W is that rendering quality degrades in areas that you rarely see during training or are observed at very oblique angles. You can see this in the floor in the first image. Similar to Nerf, 
There, you can also have a lot of problems with camera calibration errors, as improperly imaged areas can become blurry after being trained on them, as you can see in the bottom image on the right. Like Nerf, Nerf W can also, also cannot generalize easily to novel scenes, as every Nerf W model is trained specifically for a certain training scene. In addition to this, test time image embeddings are not really obtained in a very graceful way. Because embeddings have to be optimized directly during training, during test time, test time images have to also be optimized on the left half of the image, and this definitely can be improved. Thank you for listening to this talk.